it's um <laughs> I promised I wouldn't get upset. Um, oh, sorry. It's no, 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 no. It, it is what it is. We're, we're all human, and, and I think that's the point. A lot of people will be affected by this. You know, 38 is too young, and to die from an eating disorder in, in 2021, when I'm 37 this year and she was 38, it's just... It's so tragic, but unfortunately, this is happening. And I think this is this is the point of, you know, Mum and I coming on to speak today in that we need better awareness and better support. But I also want people to know that I think there will be a lot of people who are triggered by this, this news. And I've had, and I'm sure Mum has too, so many messages and people are scared. And what I want people to know is that there is hope as well and there is recovery and there is a life out there and they need to speak up and be brave and seek support early on. Let's speak to you, Mum. Uh, Mark, lovely to have you with us as well this morning. I mean, Thank one, you. One of the things I, I think um, many people are concerned about is that problems are being exacerbated by the pandemic. Do you, do you feel that is an issue for many people out there this morning? I think it's been a difficult time, this lock lockdown, and I think we've had lots of... Um, <clears throat> emails echoing this, not just from people with eating disorders, but people in general. So I think there's been a couple of things that's concerned me. One is that people haven't been able to see a doctor as readily. I think that's been a massive issue, especially around medical risk and eating disorders. And um, it's re really worrying for me. But I think before I sort of like go on, I just want to give my condolences to Nikki's family and friends. And I think, you know, let's not let's not have Nikki's death in vain, let's learn from it and let's make changes and let's raise that awareness of people that an eating disorder is a mental health illness but it also has the medical consequences and the mental health side versus the um, the medical side is a big issue for me at the moment. Um, it's not all about weight, um, her Nikki, she was such a lost soul and I was looking back at some of her footage from Big Brother and you know, I had to smile. She was so full of fun, and it's just a tragedy that um, she, she's passed. Um, I want to talk to you both about and um, what you've gone on to do, which is, you know, founding a, a, a charity where you, you help people um, with eating disorders. Um, Gemma, just to your point, I know you had sort of, in some ways, a similar experience. Um, how did it affect you, and how did you... I know your mum was a huge part in helping you get better. Um... My uh, eating disorder started at around 10 years old and, and actually it was mum and dad who co-founded co um, SEED um, because they couldn't get the help and support that they needed to get me the treatment. But also what's really important to mention is it's about the carers as well, the loved ones. I know that mum and dad and my siblings were absolutely torn apart by my 13 years of being in and out of institutions, not knowing whether I'll live or die. And I think that is what prompted mum and dad to make a change. And they set up seed when I was still in hospital. And it's just been a real full journey for us that I'm now actually the charity manager as well as patron. And I think what we always say is we treat the person, not the eating disorder. And eating disorder is a mental health illness. And I think that's what helped mum and dad bring me back from the brink in that they realised that I needed to speak. I needed to talk about what was going on up here. It wasn't just about trying to gain weight. It wasn't just about figures and numbers. It was about me as a person. And I think it's really important that people remember that it's nothing to be ashamed of if they are struggling like this. Mum and Dad have saved so many people's lives over the years and they've effectively saved mine. And the narrative can be very different but we do need more help and support from, mm. from the powers that be, and we need to start working together in partnership. We're a group of ordinary people doing extraordinary things, but there's more that we could do if we had the resources and backing and help to do it collectively as a partnership. Mm. Marge, your charity obviously does some great things and helps a lot of people. I just wonder, from your own perspective, and I'm aware there'll be people who are watching and, and listening to you too this morning and maybe suffering with this themselves or have members of their own family who are going through some sort of eating disorder this morning. Um, how hard was it for you to see uh, Gemma go through what she went through? And, and maybe tell us some of the lessons that you learned along the way. Oh, gosh, <laughs> many lessons. Um, first of all, your first question, very, very difficult. 
um, going back then, you know, 20 odd years ago, that we, we didn't even have a computer. So um, I didn't even know how to turn on, never mind anything else. So, you know, we've, we've gone a long way with that. But, um, you know, it's so, so difficult as a, as a parent and as, as a family to watch and see that, you know, your, your child has been a general best of all times. And, you know, there was times when we didn't know if she could make it or if she would still be here the next day. And, um, you know, I think, I think for me, um, it was a big lesson about the medical risk side. I didn't understand that Jenna, you know, she was seeing somebody on the Monday and little did I know she could have died on the Sunday. And that's how desperate and, and critical it was. And, um, but there was nothing, there was no resources for people. There was no information, nothing where you could turn to. And it was very, very difficult in, indeed. And as Jenna said, it has a profound psychological effect on anybody who's part of the sufferer's life. Yeah, and you make a very good point. I just want to pick up um, that point with you, Marge, as well. You know, such an impact on, on the person, uh, the family, the friends and all the rest of it. I mean, is there any, and I know you talk to people all the time, is there anything that people should look out for or what should they do in the first instance where they have concerns about someone? Yeah, I think, I think for me, it's uh, don't put your head in the sand. I did for many, many months thinking, oh, she's eating today, she's absolutely fine, there isn't a problem. But little did I know that, you know, six months down the line, she would be in crisis because, you know, that's how it was then. And basically, it's, it is about speaking out, recognising the signs and symptoms. There's a whole host of information on our website. But I think for me, the biggest thing was the change in character and that haunting sadness that, will be actually in my mind forever because that was the day that I was actually recognised that Gemma's got a real problem here. And it was that haunting look that will haunt me. And Gemma, what about yourself? Your mum's given some brilliant advice there. Um, what, what, what advice would you give to our breakfast viewers this morning? Oh, gosh. Um, it really is about finding the, the bravery and um, the courage within you to speak out and seek help. Early intervention is so key with eating disorders. The sooner somebody reaches out and starts to address the problem, the quicker we can bring them back to being the wonderful people that they are and not be taken over by this eating disorder, which is such a, a, a sad and lonely and manipulative mental health illness. But I just want people to know that. I know this is gonna be hard for so many. It's hard for me. Um, but recovery is possible and there is hope. And as mum said, our deepest condolences to, to Nikki's family and friends, if they need support right now, we are here. We're there for anybody. Nobody ever gets turned away. But I do want people to know that they are being fought for. They do matter. And there is a light at the end of the tunnel and Nikki's death will not be in vain. Um, Gemma, that's really powerful. Thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. And Marge as well. Thank you both so much for talking to us. And I know. It, my mum, I just want to hug her. <laughs> I know, I, I know. I can see that. Can we like do a virtual hug? My mum is amazing. Mum, I love you. And so is dad. He doesn't get enough praise. Poor Dennis. <laughs> well, you're giving him a nice mention too. this morning, Gemma, as well. Uh, thank you very much for, for sharing a bit of that with us this morning on the programme.